So welcome back to another video. Today is the part seven of organize and optimize. And by the way, if you're new here, this is part seven. Go and watch part one to six, which I will link up here. Now what we want to do is to really focus on the content tracker and attach the knowledge that we've just captured and organized to a creative output. This will allow us to not start from scratch every time we want to start a new video or a new blog post or something. And thanks to Notion and relational databases, we can do this completely automatic, which means we don't even even need to spend a lot of time looking for our notes. Our notes will all be connected to our content immediately as soon as we capture it. So if you, for example, want to create a script for a video or write a rough draft of an article, you can already see everything that you captured about that topic in one place. There's a lot of content trackers out there. For example, the system from Thomas Frank, which is what I also got inspiration from. But there is one thing that is missing in that system and is that they don't connect their second brain knowledge hub system to the content tracker output. This is is so powerful. You will need to do this if you are going to be creating any sort of output such as YouTube videos. So let's get into it. In the Knowledge Hub video, we mainly talked about how to capture and organize information, maybe in our Kindle eBooks, our YouTube saves, Twitter, or anything else in between. Now, what we want to focus on this week is actually on the express layer, where we use the information that we've captured to create new stuff with them. We need a database that we can use to actually manage all of our content and track what the videos, for example, we want to produce. As I am using this system to produce these YouTube videos, I'm not going to be covering a system for, for example, blogs or articles or anything, but it's super, super easy to adapt it to the way that you want. So what happens is after our weekly reviews, we can come up with some video ideas from the things that we've captured and then create new video ideas in our YouTube content manager, for example, and then connect the note to the content manager. And as I showed last week, those notes will automatically show up when you go to actually create that video. Finally, what we can do is after we've tracked all these videos over time, we can come back to them when we have time and create YouTube video scripts out of them. And now we have the YouTube script, which we can sit in front of the camera and shoot. And that will be our pillar content. That will be something that we create as our unit of output. The next layer is to use that unit of output and send it into a repurposing layer where we can actually take that pillar content and break it up into smaller things. So for example, if we go and capture three articles based on those articles, we create a 10 minute video, that 10 minute video and the script for that video itself can be changed into a blog post, can be changed into a Twitter thread. It can be connected to Instagram, Facebook or TikTok or anything else. I will not be covering the repurposing, but I will show you how this content manager and the express layer that we're going to cover today will be able to help you over time to actually achieve that as well. So if you open the template that I also linked down below and come to the content tracker section, you can see that there's a database called the content tracker. In it, I've put an example content app and basically what this database is, it is a database that tracks all the videos that we want to create. So this content tracker actually has two things. One, using the properties of this table, we can track when our videos are due to publish, what stage our videos are in. For example, have they been uploaded or are they just in the idea level or scripting or filming? And more importantly, when we actually want to start doing the video, we have a template that we can use to create new videos with. So first, let's look at the actual template. By the way, if your workflow does not actually include YouTube videos, I would not recommend to look at this template at all. It doesn't really relate to you and you can skip to this timestamp. This template that you see here is actually an adjusted version of what Ali Abdul's video talks about in his video, My Creative Workflow with Notion. And by the way, his template is also public and free to use. And all I've done is actually adjusted it to the way I wanted and added this captured sources section to it and also remove the things that I don't really want to use on a regular basis. So for example, if you open a new YouTube video template, we can see that it has different sections and we're going to cover them one by one. First, the captured sources shows the database of your library and it's automatically filtered with a self-referential filter so that anything that you capture for that video automatically shows up here. So for example, if we look at one of the videos that I've already published, it's called here is why you still haven't started your online business or something. It was uploaded on July 26th. And as you can see under the captured sources, I can see that I had a note made 
about five myths about starting your online business. And if you open this, you can see that I actually captured this the July 16th, so 10 days earlier than the actual upload date. And then I made some notes, as you can see, excuses people give themselves for starting, three-step framework to get started online, and so on and so forth. And if you go and watch this video, which by the way, I will link also up here, you can see exactly how I use this note to create the script for that video, to then create the video, and so on and so forth. The next section, tools, is a list of tools that will be there for every single video. I only use thumbs up TV, which is actually super good for a YouTube video. So if you have an actual YouTube video, you can always click here and then put your thumbnail and see how it will look on different devices and so on and so forth. And then you can also adjust your title so it fits the number of characters that will show up, for example. Anyway, not to get too much into that, but you can use this tools section to actually go back to it. If you have a paid subscription, for example, for vidIQ or TubeBuddy, it's a quick way of getting to them. Then there's a research section. This is when you want to capture extra notes, things that are only specific to that video, but they don't really want to go into your knowledge hub. You know, this is not something that you're going to come back to. So for example, if I'm making a video about coffee, I'm not going to go and capture a ton of things into my knowledge hub just about coffee. Maybe the structure of that video should be something that goes into my knowledge hub, but the research for that specific video shouldn't really go there. So I can put the links to my different articles that I want for that topic specifically for this video under this section. Finally, again, notes, ideas, and to-dos. It's a section just so that you can write new things about this video and your own original thoughts that again, don't fit into your knowledge hub. As a rule of thumb, you should only put things into your knowledge hub that you think are gonna be useful over time or you can connect them to your outputs or to your projects or areas. One-off information don't really fit into that. After that, the next section is gonna be the titles, thumbnails, and tags. This is gonna be specific to YouTube videos. So if you, for example, wanna adjust this template for your blog or article, you can put meta description here, or you can put the title of the blog there and so on and so forth. As a rule of thumb for YouTube, the way I actually do it, I list around five to 10 title ideas for myself here for every single video. And then I might make multiple variations of the thumbnail and put them here right next to each other so I know what is happening. I'm showing an example. So you can see, for example, on the video, if you're a YouTuber, you need to create an online course, which I actually uploaded on August 3rd. You can see that I had five other titles and I tried different thumbnails and actually chose one of them that is right now on my channel. But anyway, you can use this to actually track what the video is going to be about. Next, there's going to be a five step process to actually creating the video and remixing it and creating new content with the video. The first one is the preparation. This is specific to the way Ali Abdal actually teaches to create your videos. I actually took his course, Part-Time YouTuber Academy, and he covers all of these things in depth. By the way, the link to that course will also be in the description down below if you're interested in becoming a YouTuber yourself and creating new videos. But basically, there's story elements which we can use. There's different branding elements that you can use in your videos. And there's his popular script framework of Hive, hook, intro, value, and end screen sales pitch. And these are there every time for the video in the template so that you can come and fill them up over time to actually create a new good video. To be honest, when I actually don't fully script a video, for example, this is not scripted, this is just quickly my thoughts on what I have in my system, I don't really go through all these preparation phases. But if I actually have a full on video that it needs its own shot list, it needs specific story elements, it needs specific branding elements, then of course this is there for me to help me and I actually go through it and do it. Step two is the full script. Here's when you can actually look at the things that you did in your preparation and now write the exact words that you're gonna say and probably let's say, read it off the teleprompter or something like that. Step three is gonna be the B-rolls and the B-rolls are actually a B-roll library database that we have and I'll cover that in a few minutes. But basically what happens is the B-rolls that you wanna take for your video, you can actually track them all here and you can create a shot list for yourself and they will also be saved in your, to your B-roll library. So at any point, if you wanna go back to them and use them for a video in the future, you have a reference from them. Last thing is the final checklist, making sure the production checklist, the editing checklist, the publishing checklist and the post-publishing checklist this is all there and the remixing checklist it's just a few to do's so that you can turn the video into a blog to an instagram post or so on and so forth to be honest personally i am definitely experimenting myself with this to figure out what exactly works for me but it might be different to you and the specific type of content that you create so at any point you can come and delete these or add your own things into them. The most important part of this template is the captured sources that you see up here and the title, thumbnail and tags that we have at the top of the template. So what happens is next time you wanna start your YouTube video and actually start working on that, you can always open a new page 
and then click on YouTube video template right there. And it will actually populate everything that we just covered into that template for you. It will set the status to an idea because it will always start as an idea. And then you can actually create the next parts of it. And if you, for example, have a specific thing in your knowledge hub already that you want to connect to this video, what you can do is that you can just create the empty video template there and then just connect those sources. Later on, when you come to actually use it, all those things will be actually showing up underneath your captured sources. So let me actually show you an example. Let's say this is an example video. And what happens is I can now at some point in my time go and capture something into my knowledge hub. Let's just say it's a personal note and we say example note. And all I need to do after I fill up all the properties for that specific note, which we covered in the previous video, you can always click here and just type the name of the video that you want and then just click on add. That's it. As you can see, the example video is connected to the related content output. And here under the example video, you can see the example note is under captured sources. So if you open this, actually the example note will also show up under your captured sources. So you might have 20 different notes for this specific video. And at any point you can open the template for that specific video and all the notes that you have captured for that are showing up right there. And then you can jump back into them. You can look at what you captured and create a script out of it, which is by the way, exactly what is shown here. You can a content manager or content tracker. We can create the YouTube script, which then will actually be the YouTube video at the end. Okay, now let's talk about the actual properties of this table. First one is the video title, nothing specific, just type the name of the video that you're going to make or the blog post or whatever. Second one is the status here. The status is actually divided into the different parts of the whole video production. So it always starts as an idea, then goes to title and thumbnails. So you should always create title and thumbnails before you actually go to shoot the video. You have the researching and scripting phase, filming, editing, B-roll, scheduling, and uploading it. I also have an extra one called shorts. This is for YouTube shorts and TikTok and uh, Instagram reels and stuff. If I want to make videos about that, I actually don't want to go through all this process. And all it has to do is to literally just shoot the video once and you're good to go. So I just call it its own category shorts and it's super easy for me to do. By the way, you can always come and switch your view to the status view, all active videos in status. And what happens is that you can see everything as actual production pipeline. So using this Kanban view, I can see that, for example, I have 44 videos in the idea column. I have title and thumbnails and stuff, nothing in them. I'm scripting right now something. So it was organized and optimized part eight, which is coming and the week after next and filming right now, part seven that you're seeing right now. And obviously all the things I've uploaded before you can see right here and all the shorts that I, for example, have in my system. And by the way, at any point, so for example, I'm finishing this video right now, then I can move it into the editing phase. So now I know, okay, there's an editing here. If you work with a team and you have a, for example, a specific editor, you can give them access to this specific database by just clicking here, opening it as a page and then sharing it to whoever you want. You can just click on share to web and then give them the link or invite them as a guest or something. And basically they can just work with you so they can see what is in the editing and then they can actually put it to the next one, schedule it or put it to done and so on and so forth. Going back, the next property is the topic. The topic again is random. It depends on what type of videos you make. I just make a list of all the different things I make and over time, the ones that I don't actually make, I will delete them. Next is the upload date, very self-explanatory. All you have to do is to click here and choose the date that you want to upload it. And by the way, you can always come to the all active videos calendar view here, and you can actually see all the videos that you published and you are going to publish. For example, from July, 2021, you can see that I started uploading videos from the 12th of July. And as you go forward, you can see that I became a bit inconsistent here uh, because I was learning a lot of different things. And then now I actually took a holiday in September and now I'm back on track and actually uploading every Monday. So next is the actual publish URL. The publish URL is nothing special. After you upload it, you can just copy the link and then put it here. You can always click it and the actual YouTube video will open for you. So organize and optimize part five. And this is obviously organize and optimize part five. So the sponsor right now, my channel is small, so I don't have any sponsor, so it's not applicable, but you can always add your own here and actually assign it. Finally, we have the published column. This is very important because when you click on the published column and you actually tick on this, the video is closed and actually will then move to your archive. If I, for example, publish something here, you can see that all the published ones will not show up in our all active videos 
because it's not an active video anymore. After you publish it and you actually tick that box, it is closed and then it will be moved to your archive, which by the way, I will cover next week and we'll actually go into our whole archive and libraries and so on and so forth. Finally, captured sources. We've already covered this. By the way, you can also always come to the video and connect multiple notes and stuff into that specific thing. Just for the sake of the argument, let's say, BASP system overview. I want to connect all my BASP notes on this. So I can just search BASP. As you can see here, building a second brain notes are all here. Unit one, unit two, unit three, unit four, and curriculum. So all of that will then be here. And if I obviously open the video under my captured sources, I can see everything here. The related shorts and the B-roll library are just two specific add-ons that I've added to the system. And I admit I have not used them effectively yet, but I think they're a nice addition and they're there if you want. If you don't want them, just right click and delete them anyway. But basically after we create our pillar content, which is our YouTube video, we can use that video to create other things with it and convert them into a TikTok or an Instagram reel. So our pillar content is actually being distributed in multiple ways. So I actually only tried that once with the video here Here's why I still haven't started online. And as you can see from that video, which was a listicle video, I created five different shorts. And if we jump to the shorts library, we can see that those shorts are right there. There's a description of them. There's a related video nothing special, but I admit this is something that I am experimenting with, but it's there for you if you want to use it. If not, just delete them all. Similarly, the B-roll library, as you can see here, is nothing more than a related database to the B-roll library database. And quickly, just to go over the properties, you can see the name of the B-roll, the timestamp for it, the length of it, the type of the B-roll, the times that I've used it overall, I give my B-rolls a rating, for example, and then I can actually connect it to a specific output let's say just for the sake of the argument uh, in this video i have it and the url is also there if it is a, for example a stock video or something and i can always click on if i captured it or not the other thing is that if i actually go to that specific video under the b-roll database in my template i can actually see that showing up so i know when i go to shoot that video i have all my shot list of all the things that i need to have uh, when I actually go to edit it. But that's about it. It's not so complicated. You just have to know that using your knowledge hub, you can capture new information and then connect them to your content tracker and then create new stuff with it using the template or not, depending on how you actually create your output. And you can use these properties to actually track what you're working on. When is the published date? Is it published or not? And so on and so forth. And by the way, if you are going to create your own library from the Readwise integration, which as I said in the previous video, I will cover later in the future, you will need to create this new library and actually recreate and reconnect this related captured sources, as you can see here. Uh, but don't worry, I will also cover that. Just think about what is your unit of output and think if you even want to use this system to create new stuff. But that's about it, guys. In the previous video and this video, we actually went over the whole building a second brain code, which is capture, organize the Cinnamon Express from my point of view. And then we additionally added some elements from the part-time YouTuber Academy, such as a template and repurposing the content or remixing the content. And all of that actually is achievable with just two databases of our knowledge of and our content tracker. I hope that actually gave you a lot of insight as to how this system can work for you. We have definitely covered everything in our original organize and optimize table apart from resources and archives which is what we will cover next week so that's about it guys if you're enjoying this series so far please leave a like and subscribe and actually maybe share this series to your friends or anybody else that you can think of that can actually take advantage of this system apart from that that's it i'll catch you guys in the next video peace